Now we're going to discuss uh, vector products. So we're going to start with the dot product first, which is also called the inner product. Now we have two vectors A and B making an angle theta with each other. The dot product, if you remember, is defined as the magnitude of the first vector. So it's magnitude of A multiplied by the magnitude of the second vector B and cosine of the angle between them. So it's cosine theta. So that's how we define the dot product. And uh, for example, this is used in physics uh, when we calculate the work done by a force. The work done is a line integral. It is the dot product of the force with the displacement integrated over the path uh, on which the motion occurs. So this is a line integral. And uh, using the definition of the dot product, I can see that if I take the dot product of a vector with itself, a dot a, this would be absolute value of a squared multiplied by cosine zero, which is one. So this is absolute value, the magnitude of uh, a squared and theta is equal to zero degrees for this case. Now I want to write the um, dot product using the subscript summation notation. So using subscript summation notation, um, first of all, I recall that vector A can be written as its components A sub i in the basis e i hat and this is implying a summation over the index i so this is a1 e1 hat plus a2 e2 hat plus a3 e3 hat for three dimensional vectors this dot product with bj ej hat that is my vector b so this is going to give me the product of a i the i -th component of a vector j component of b vector and the dot product e i hat dot e j hat. All right. And at this point, I know that e i hat and e j hat are, uh, if they are uh, basis vectors for the Cartesian coordinate system, they will satisfy the following uh, because they're orthonormal unit vectors the dot product is going to be equal to 1 if the indices are equal, i is equal to j, and 0 otherwise, for i is not equal to j. And this is true for a Cartesian coordinate system, where the unit vectors are orthonormal. And now I can write this result uh, using the subscript summation notation by introducing the Kronecker delta. The Kronecker, Kronecker delta is defined as delta ij is equal to 1 if i is equal to j and it's equal to 0 if i is not equal to j. That's the definition. So that I can write e i hat dot e j hat to be equal to Kronecker delta i j. When i and j are equal, uh, this is 1, and when i and j are not equal, it is 0. So with that, then I can write my dot product a dot b. Remember, it was a i b j e i hat dot e j hat, and that is going to become a i b j Kronecker delta ij. Now you can see that both i is repeated and j is repeated. So this is a summation over i and j. And if I write it this way, a i b j delta ij 
that's going to imply whenever i is not equal to j this is going to be zero when i is equal to j it's going to be equal to one so this will make it, it, it index j equal to i so that means this is a i b i so that the dot product can be written as a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 okay now uh, with that i can now write the dot product uh, explicitly using the kronecker delta here just to see this result it's going to be i is equal to one it's a1 j is equal to one is b1 delta one one plus i is equal to two, uh, 1 a1 j is equal to 2 b2 delta 1 2 plus i is equal to 1 j is equal to 3 delta 1 3 plus i is equal to 2 j is equal to 1 a2 b1 delta 2 1 plus i is equal to 2 j is equal to 2 delta 2 2 plus etc so this continues like that and whenever i see i and j are not equal so delta 1 2 is equal to 0 delta 1 3 is equal to 0 and delta 2 1 is equal to 0 but when they are equal it's replaced by 1 so that means what I will end up getting for the dot product, this is A1, B1, plus A2, B2, plus A3, B3. So indeed, the dot product can be written this way. Now I can try the matrix representation for Kronecker delta. So Kronecker delta... also has a matrix representation so Kronecker delta ij is shown with this unit uh, matrix when i and j are equal it is equal to one so delta one one is one delta one two is zero delta one three is zero delta two one is zero delta two two is one delta two three is zero delta three one is zero delta three two is zero and delta three three is equal to one so delta one one delta two two and delta three three they are equal to one so this gives me the matrix representation of the kronecker delta okay so that means I can also write the dot product with a matrix representation. So this allows us to write the matrix representation of the dot product so that A dot B uh, is going to be the first vector A transpose the unit vector the unit matrix one and the second uh, vector b so that means i have a1 a2 a3 i have my unit matrix 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 and here i have b1 b2 B3. Now you can see that uh, when I have multiplication of this matrix with B1, B2, B3, this is going to give me B1, B2, B3, so that's the B itself. So that means I have A transpose multiplied with B vector uh, matrix representation. So that gives me a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 so this is a 1 by 3 matrix this is a 3 by 1 matrix it gives me a 1 by 1 matrix only one matrix element which is 
The sum of these products, A1, B1, A2, B2, and A3, B3, just as I expected. So this is how I do the matrix representation. Okay, so the dot product is given by the transpose of the matrix representation of the first vector multiplied by the second vector written in the column form. Okay, there's another uh, product, possible product between these uh, two vectors A and B. It's called the cross product. The vector A makes an angle theta with respect to vector B, and vector C is their cross product, which is perpendicular to the plane that has both A and B in, in them. And the direction of vector C is found by using the right hand rule. The right hand four fingers point in the direction of A, the, uh, the, then we curl them towards B and the thumb points perpendicular to the plane that contains A and B, showing us the direction of C. So we show the cross product with this cross sign and its magnitude of vector C is magnitude of vector A multiplied by magnitude of vector B and sine of the angle between them. And this vector C is perpendicular to the plane that contains the two vectors A and B. All right. And the cross product can also be written as a determinant. So we can write the basis vectors first, E1 hat, E2 hat, E3 hat in the first row. Uh, the components of vector A in the second row and components of vector B in the third row. And then we can write this determinant. Uh, so here we have uh, for the first uh, column plus, second column minus, third column plus. So uh, we can write this as e1 hat multiplied with a2 b3 minus b2 a3 so this is the first term a2 b3 minus a3 b2 e1 hat and then we have minus e2 hat times a1 b3 minus b1 a3 or a3 b1 so plus e2 hat times a3 b1 minus a1 b3 that's e2 hat so i've operated the minus sign to the parentheses and e3 hat times a1 b2 minus b1 a2 so this is plus a1 b2 minus a2, B1, E3 hat. So that's how I write the uh, cross product using the determinant. And using subscript summation notation, it's also possible to write the cross product. So let's look at that using subscript summation notation. A cross B can be written as AI BJ EK hat Epsilon IJK, where this Epsilon IJK is called the Levi Civita Levi Civita symbol. And it is defined as epsilon ijk is equal to plus one for ijk have even permutations of one, two, three. It's minus one for ijk have odd permutations of one, two, three. And zero if two or more subscripts are equal. That's the definition of the Levi Civita symbol. For example, if I have epsilon one, two, three, and uh, I go to uh, epsilon two, three, one, so epsilon one, two, three 
is equal to epsilon 231 is equal to epsilon 312 because uh, I have uh, you can see here cyclic permutations of 1 2 and 3 I reach from 1 2 3 to 2 3 1 with even permutations of 1 2 3 how so for example 1 and 2 changes a uh, place so I would get 2 1 3 and then 1 and 3 would change place then I would have 2 3 1 so 1 2 3 2 1 3 2 3 1 so that's how I would get here with two permutations which is even permutations of 1 2 3 and similarly we have this equal to epsilon 3 1 2 and the easiest way to see that is using these cyclic permutations if I go from 1 2 3 to 2 3 1 or 3 1 2 uh, I'm multiplying it by plus 1 that means it's the same thing so these are all equal to 1 now if I go from epsilon uh, 2 1 3 2 1 3 to 3 2 1 or 1 3 2 then I'm going in the other direction which means this is multiplying it by minus 1 so those are so you can see clockwise is plus 1 counterclockwise is minus 1 here so with these permutations uh, let's try this going from 2 1 3 to 3 2 1 so if 2 and 1 exchange places I would get 1 2 3 uh, then if I would have uh, so if I go from 2 1 3 to 3 2 1 I would have 1 2 3 first and then uh, I need uh, 1 uh, I need 3 2 1 so 3 uh, 3 has to go uh, to the first place so that means it has to go uh, from its last position to the second position and the third position so this would require uh, first of all um, one three two and then three uh, one two you can see starting from two one three I did one two three then I go to one three two then I go to three one two and then I go to three two one so I had to do it once two times three times uh, four times so starting from two one three I first I go to one two three so two one three one two three is multiplying it by minus one so two one three uh, two one three going to one two three it's plus one two one three is minus one so there is a factor of minus one here um, so I go from uh, 2 1 3 to uh, so 1 2 3 to 1 3 2 I have to exchange the places of 2 3 and uh, uh, 2 and 3 so this is going to become 1 3 2 so 1 3 2 is minus 1 but 1 2 3 is plus 1 so it's multiplying it by minus 1 again so this is going to be going from here to here is multiplying it by plus 1 etc so uh, you can see here 2 1 3 going from 2 1 3 to uh, 3 2 1 and 1 3 2 I'm doing the same thing so these are all uh, basically equal to minus 1 so when I have odd permutations of 1 2 and 3 I have minus 1 so uh, that's what I see here this is this can be seen easily using these cyclic permutations if I go in the um, counterclockwise direction 1 3 2 3 2 1 and 2 1 3 epsilon values are minus 1 and 1 3 2 3 2 3 1 and 3 1 2 are plus 1 but whenever two of these subscripts are equal or more of them are equal it's going to be equal to 0 so that's how I uh, use the uh, Levi Civita symbol okay so um, we have talked about two vector products the dot product the inner product which is um, a dot b uh, we show it with the dot in the middle and when the vectors make an angle theta 
its magnitude of the first vector multiplied by the magnitude of the second vector cosine of the angle between them. Using subscript summation notation, this can be written as AIBJ Kronecker delta IJ, where Kronecker delta IJ is equal to 1 if the two indices are the same, it's 0 if they are not the same. And that's basically giving me this uh, orthonormal unit vectors uh, dot product. And uh, we have seen using the, the summation of the two repeated indices that this actually implies this is equal to AI BI. And you can see that here because I is not equal to J, it's zero. If I is equal to J, it's one. So that means this has to be equal to one. So that means A, I, B, I. A, one, B, one plus A, two, B, two plus A, three, B, three. That's what it means. I can use the matrix representation for Kronecker delta. That's the unit matrix. Uh, and here uh, the, for the dot product, I can see that it's the transpose of the first a matrix multiplied by the second matrix written in column form in order to represent the dot product of the two vectors. The cross product gives me a third vector which is perpendicular to the plane that contains the vectors a and b. Its magnitude is the product of the magnitudes multiplied by sine of the angle between the two vectors. It can be written as a determinant written this way and using subscript summation notation we have to um, just as we did in the dot product, if we had to introduce Kronecker delta, here we have to introduce the Levi Civita symbol, which is epsilon ijk, that's defined to be equal to plus 1 for even permutations of 1, 2, 3. So going from 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, we have the same, uh, we are going in the same direction in cyclic permutations. This is always equal to plus 1. And it's minus 1 for odd permutations of 1, 2, 3. That means we're going in the counterclockwise directions. And here you can see explicitly how this works.